So Fatima, welcome to Immunity Group Australia's podcast. Yes, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. You're joining us from New York City. Can you tell us a bit about yourself, please? Yes. Okay. Um, New York City. Yes. Bronx resident all my life. Um, I actually have been teaching for the last uh, five years now. It's been since 2019. After a long career in the fashion industry, I decided to uh, work with kids. I have a son. He is amazing. And it was his idea. He goes, mommy, you should work with kids. So um, I decided to dive into it and I became a preschool teacher. And uh, my first two years as a preschool teacher is where my whole project came about. So um, I now I'm actually working with middle school kids. And believe it or not, my project has kind of like shifted into a higher grade and uh, older kids. So yeah, so I'm teaching um, here in the Bronx on Fordham Road. And I love my job. I love my kids. Um, I think uh, they call me one of the popular teachers. And it, it's really cool. I love to, um, they love Peanut and Friends, by the way. I have all my projects. I include my kids into everything. Um, what else? Uh, I have a son. He's graduating um, the 24th. My only child, he's a son. He's going off to college, upstate New York. So I'm excited and, you know, I'm going to be alone now. I have a dog and he's like my everything. So, yeah, that's but it. I've been here. Peanut and friends. How did Peanut and Friends come about? I see a little Peanut behind you. Yes, that's my guy. This is my main character. So like I was telling you, when I started the daycare teacher, um, that's where it came alive. So most of my students were allergic. You know, pe most daycares in New York are peanut free zone. If you walk into any child development uh, building, it says it almost right away, peanut free zone, right? Because it's a lot of kids that suffer from different allergies. So as a teacher, for some reason, the, the parents never really took in consideration about another child's allergy, right? So they somehow missed the sign and would come in with peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, peanut butter bars, you know, things like that. So one day I decided I'm also an artist to create a huge peanut. So I drew him in a big piece of paper and I wrote, he can't come in. And I made copies and I plastered it all over the daycare. And for some reason that caught everyone's attention. Like, oh my God, who drew that big peanut up there? And that became like the talk of the town. So that from that one picture, I started to come up with a story. And that's when He Can't Come In came in the picture, which was a children's book that I wrote in 2019. So these are all the characters from the book. So this is Elliot A. I decided to make the main characters peanut allergies. So uh, allergies, right? So here we go. It's Peanut Jr., it's my little guy. He he was the guy that I drew on the paper we discussed. He was the main character. This is the one that was like, he can't come in. This peanut cannot come in the building. So that's how it started. So the children's book, I think I wrote it within the two, two, three months. And I got it published. And that book became probably the most popular book in my in my town in the Bronx at the time because I was a school teacher I was able to share the story with all the kids in the community and they loved it so from there I decided to bring the characters to life because the kids were so attracted to the actual characters what better way to talk about allergies with such relatable characters these little cute little plushy things here so, so that's who's how the, who's the white guy. So the white guy is Elliot Egg. He's an Elliot egg. egg. And how many kids are uh, allergic to eggs? You know, it's one, one, one point three million kids are allergic to allergies, and a big percentage of them are allergic to eggs. So then I decided to create Fanny Fish here. She's a fish. And a lot of kids are also allergic to fish. You know, the majority is the main nine allergies they are pretty much allergic to. 
Shelly Shrimp. This is my favorite. She came from my son. My son is allergic to shrimp. And we found this out one year going to a Red Lobster in Harlem, New York one day. And my son he usually orders like crab legs. Never had a reaction. But he decided to ask me, can he have some of my shrimp? And maybe two bites in, he started to break out in hives. And his eyes started to swell up. And that was a quick trip to the emergency room. So I decided to make a shrimp in in honor of my child and so many other kids that are allergic to shrimp. So these characters- It's also have, one of the main allergies, actually growing one, the shrimp allergy. Yeah, this is like a big one here, you know? And if, if you go to any restaurant, they have this guy plastered all over the place because he's one of the main ones. So- um, from there on, we have our little lady here. She is Principal Berry. She is the principal in the book. So she's a strawberry, obviously. And this is another allergy. So these five main characters, they travel with me to do my seminars. I do 45 to 60 minute seminars in a lot of the local daycare centers and a lot of the local elementary schools. And the kids love it. We start off with like a really cool introduction and we actually end with a skit that's in the book. So I think it, it, it's it's a really cool one. It's so cool that most of the adults, they participate more than anyone. I'm like, oh my God, this is so, you know, my last seminar was very successful. I had over 50 kids Wow. and they were all engaging. And the thing is, I think that the characters are the main focus. So I really, really want to put these guys in production. They belong out there. They tell the story. They are all going to be fitted with like recordings discussing the actual allergy. So this will be amazing. Yeah, I think as a I think technology mom, uh, how do you feel that other moms, in particular moms, I guess primary carers, but especially moms, how do they react to your program? They get really excited. They get really excited to the program because they said that there is nothing like it. Most people focus on adults, you know, and we need to focus on school age children. At this very young age, we have so many kids that are suffering from allergies at school and there's nobody talking about it, you know? And how I was even heard of was because unfortunately there was a man named Thomas Severa, his son unfortunately passed away due to a food allergy. Elijah. And he, yeah, Elijah. And he visited uh, a school that I was working at and I was no longer there. But because of these characters, they passed it along to Thomas and Thomas reached out to me. And he actually made my book, He Can't Come In, part of his foundation page, which was awesome, you know, just to help me spread the word. So as soon as he heard about it, he gave me a call and he was like, listen, they told me a lot of cool things about these peanut and friends. And I thought it was a good idea to like that. They gave me more confidence to show that this really means no one is talking about it with kids. There's no seminars in school. There's no uh, curriculum that includes peanut allergies or or awareness, period, about food allergies. And it starts at daycare centers. So I want to be the ones. And, you know, it's hard to take to get the attention of a two year old. You know, what better way to get their attention with other than relatable characters, you know? And also I've, I've created so much stuff. I have this really cool lunchbox. Wow, my incredible. It's so awesome. I already sold about 70 of these to my summer school kids. So this is another thing. Just seeing these characters, they're like the new symbol of food allergies among school age children. So I think it's so important to get these little guys out there. Getting them out there is getting kids to talk more about food allergies. It's a it's a dangerous thing if and they need to be aware. They're never too small to be educated ever. And yeah. in terms of support which you had within the school community, um, not where you live, I guess, and in greater New York, um, what kind of support did you feel that you got or what kind of support can you benefit from in the future? Well, the greatest support that I have right now is the support of children. Like that is the main, they love it. I, they put stickers of peanut and friends all over their water bottles. Like the kids support shows me they're listening. They want it. You know, they, I want to see them on PBS with 
uh, educational commercials. I've created PSAs with them that the kids love. So number one, my biggest support are the children. It shows me that they are interested, right? And then I have the support of other teachers. And recently I got a big backing from my principal who was very interested. And she actually had me do a couple of seminars at the school. And I was honored by the United Federation of Teachers. It, they actually got to see it and they did a whole newspaper report of, about it in April of last year. So that's a big support, getting the backings of teachers, right? And then pediatricians. I did a seminar at a local hospital and they were just like, wow. Like the kids, they're excited about it. So the support, now the thing is getting it worldwide. Every child has allergies, even in Austria, even everywhere, all over the world. So um, the support is here. I just definitely need it to be a little bit expanded. So I'm doing that by going to the food allergy summits and getting to know people. When I went to FAIR, I got to meet Sung and... Uh, from FAIR, the CEO of FAIR just put that it was, it's amazing what I'm doing. So again, it's showing that this is it. It's nothing like it. I will be the first to have something like this. So it will be cool. Have you had a chance to um, tap into the allergies community of, of American doctors, perhaps? Um, I'm, I'm reaching out. I'm reaching out in everywhere I can. Um, LinkedIn and all of these platforms are a big way for me right now. But again, I'm learning um, how to just try to get the people that are in the right place, which is doctors are a huge part of it. They get to see how many kids come in every day in an emergency room with a list of allergies, with a list. I, I have a couple of friends in the nurse department and they're like, girl, keep doing what you're doing. We need it. Like kids are coming in with more than five allergies, you know? So your story needs to be told. Peanut and friends need to be out there. So yes, but I, I'm trying to get it most, mostly via social networking, but maybe writing a couple of letters to some doctors, but it's not easy, but I'm never going to give up because I really believe in this project. And I see that uh, one of your characters at the back is holding an EpiPen. Yes, that's me night. He's holding an EpiPen. Uh, that is the main focus. At my seminars, I teach kids how to do training. So we have EpiPens that are trainers and we teach the kids how to use them correctly. Um, I even bring out the new EpiPen, which is the with a voice box, you know, and we do so many things and the kids are excited to do it, you know, like, wow. And, and you'll be surprised, even if they don't have an allergy, they know someone who has an allergy, a parent, a sibling. So yeah, it's, it's very important. And you're normalizing the talk because a lot of, as we know, food allergy children are bullied at school. Do you know uh, much about, I mean, what, tell us about that from, from your right. perspective. So, um, because of, of peanut and friends are able to have a lot of discussions with the kids and they do sometimes get bullied about, you know, oh, you can't eat this or you can't eat that. So it, it is a lot of that. And it causes a lot of social emotional, um, issues at school and sometimes it, it interferes with their education you know they don't they're they don't become in the mood to do anything because they're so worried about what someone is going to say or they want to eat alone sometimes they don't want to eat amongst everyone in the cafeteria you know it's to me it's a big deal you know so that's why I decided to focus on the younger kids instead of adults. You know, we know a lot, but the kids need to be more aware. So, yeah. <laughs> so your characters give them confidence and normalizing the talk. And um, and I love your um, picture behind you of a globe, isn't it? Um, that It's a global problem. It's a global issue. It, this is definitely a global issue. And these are characters that are relatable to everyone across the globe. You know, it's not one person that that wouldn't know about a strawberry or a fish, you know? And again, they they bring comfort. It's not only their educational, 
plushies, but they also bring some type of comfort, you know? Imagine someone, and, and you can gift someone who had an allergic reaction, you know, it's even kind of like a quirky, funny thing. Like, you know, people get hospitalized for different things. So I would also love to see these in the gift shops and, and all the hospitals at the gift shops. You know, let me run down and get you a cute little cuddly peanut to give you a little bit of, you know, feel, make you feel better about your experience, unfortunately, you know, at the doctors. So definitely a global issue. And I know peanut and friends will help bring awareness especially to the young kids, you know, and we can avoid so many issues in the schools and the daycare centers. We need to do better with the menu. And yeah, so yeah. Thank you it. for all the work you do. We hope to see your products in Australia as well and your book. Especially. Oh, OMG. I am totally willing to get my, but they need to be everywhere. So Austria, here we come. <laughs> and is your book available on Amazon or? Yes, it's on uh, available on Amazon. It's also available on Barnes and Nobles, and it's called "He Can't Come In," and it's by me, Fatima Strawn. Beautiful. Thank you so much, and uh, we hope to speak to you again in the future. Yes, thank you for having me, and thank you for all your support, and thank you for highlighting my guys. And wish me well because we are coming everywhere. We will be near you anytime soon. <laughs> thank you, Fatima. Thank you.